Hi, I'm Malcolm Burrows, Principal of Dundas Lawyers. Dundas Lawyers is an award-winning corporate technology and intellectual property law firm that also passionately litigates in these areas of practice. We have offices in Brisbane and the Gold Coast. So enforcing or defending your patent rights through litigation can be a time-consuming and costly exercise. However, it can also be a valid response to competition. Whether a patent has been infringed can be a complex and technical inquiry, depending of course on the nature of the invention in question. In this video, I will discuss the exclusive rights granted by a patent, how to establish broadly whether or not a patent has been infringed, and the remedies available to the patentee for infringement of their patent. Pursuant to Section 13 of the Patents Act, a patent grants the patentee the exclusive rights to exploit the invention and to authorise another person to exploit it in the patent area, being Australia. These exclusive rights are personal property that are capable of assignment. The Patents Act defines the term exploit to include making, hiring, selling, offering to sell, use or importing the patented product or method. Therefore, a patentee has the exclusive right to manufacture or offer to make the patented product, make the patented product or process um, available for sale or hire, dispose of the product, use or import the product, or keep keep it for the purposes of doing any of these things. It's a fairly broad definition. There are four things that a patentee must prove to establish that their patent has been infringed. These are that they are the patentee, that the alleged infringer acted without the patentee's authorization, the alleged infringer attempt has exploited the invention as claimed in the patent, and that the infringement was performed in the patent area, as discussed being Australia. Most of these elements would seem to be simply proven. However, the key element is whether the alleged infringer has exploited the invention which falls within the claims of the patent. To establish this, the patentee must prove that the alleged infringing product takes all of the essential integers of the claims of the patent. And the leading case on this is Doric Products Proprietary Limited and Asia Pacific Trading Ost Proprietary Limited, which was a federal court decision in 2017. As the court in Doric said at paragraph 38, as a fundamental rule, the test for infringement is determined by construction of the claim, and there will be no infringement unless the alleged infringer has taken all of the essential features of the claim. This leads to an obvious next question, which is when will an invention take all of the essential integers of the claim? To understand this, um, it's best to first understand the structure of a patent itself. A patent is like made up of broad areas, firstly it's the layout. The patent specification contains the body of the specification and the claims, generally with illustrations, which can also be prefer referred to as a preferred embodiment at the end. The body of the specification explains the background of the patent invention, together with describing how it differs from similar types of prior inventions, and gives instructions on how to produce the patent invention. The patent will then end with claims. A patent must contain at least, at least one claim, and these define the scope of the patented invention. A patented invention is defined by its claims, and that the leading case on this is Kinabalu Investments Proprietary Limited against Barron and Rawson, which is a federal court decision in 2008. Therefore, a patent's claim set out the features of the patented invention so that a product that falls within a claim is the derivative of the patented product. Typically, a patent's claims will contain a number of features which make up the claim. These are known as integers. For example, a claim for a patented hammer may include a wooden shaft, a such shaft being no longer than 30 centimetres, with a metal attachment at one end, and such attachment containing a metal ball with a flat surface on the outer side. This claim, whilst trite, is made up of different elements. These are called the integers. So just what is an essential integer? Whether an integer is essential or not, is generally determined by the patentee. And the leading case on this is Freesis Medical Care Australia and Canberra Proprietary Limited, Federal Court decision in 2005. An integer will usually be essential unless it does not materially affect the way the invention works. Even if a feature does not materially affect the way the invention works, it is essential if it is evident from reading the patent that the feature is intended to be essential. In this case goes, this, the authority for this case goes back to Katnick Components against Helen Smith in 1982. 
Once the essential inches of a claim are ascertained, the court will place itself in the position of a person skilled in the art to which the patent is directed, and determine whether or not the alleged infringing product contains each of the essential integers. If it does, then, a patent, then the patent has been infringed. So remedies for patent infringement. If the court determines that a patent has been infringed, the patentee may elect to receive an injunction, a permanent injunction, damages, or an account of profits, pursuant to section 122.1 and section 122.1a respectively, and additional damages, normally for flagrancy. Whilst a party may seek a remedy from one or all three levels of remedies, patentees should be aware that the election must be made between an damages and an account of profits that it's mutually exclusive. You can't take both. So patents can be an extremely valuable tool to protect the intellectual, intellectual property of the patentee. If the patentee believes that another person is exploiting their patent without their authorization, they'll need to determine whether infringement has in fact taken place. Determining the integers of the patentee's patent and comparing them to the alleged infringing product is always a necessary first step. If the patentee believes infringement has occurred, they should seek legal advice as soon as possible to see how to best stop the infringement continuing. Normally a patent attorney is involved as this first step and best to get one that's involved in the, in the area of the invention. So if you're looking for an intellectual property law firm that's passionate about enforcing or protecting your rights, don't hesitate to call me on 3221 0013 for an obligation-free discussion and confidential chat. Thanks for watching.